Back here at Bolium for the Scratch Division title match. Tough conditions, low scoring halfway through the match. Part of that on missed spares. This is Richard Paul, the number two seed, has missed two spares in a row the last two frames. Taking on Solomon, who whipped the seventh in his last frame, and that's in another one right there. My goodness. These guys are Team USA bowlers because they are rock solid and do not miss spares. But it can happen to anybody at any time. You lose that feel a little bit. The shot's tough, so you end up squeezing it a little bit. And the result is three opens in a row for Paul and a 36 pin deficit. Salama wants spare strike strike. With the old trusty, the light blue target zone. I don't think there's even any question about it. It's the most famous target zone in bowling. Can you name any other target zone that's famous in bowling? Perhaps right above. Has a chance this summer to repeat in the U15 in junior gold. That's sick. SIC exclamation point emoji emoji emoji. Oh, I see. He's trying to talk like you kids. Which is horrible. Oh! What a break roll in the two. I was going to say he just wants to put Richard away or not give him a chance to come back. It looked like the light three was not going to help him. Instead, he gets tremendous spin action to roll that three. And I guarantee you that is a steamed Northern Californian on the, uh, on the approach right now. You might go a year without seeing him miss three makeables in a row. Hold on, Women's US Open, a very middle of the road type pattern, but it is blown out. There's a ton of friction here at Bullium. He's doing the old three stepper in front of the ball return. So about fifth arrow, and that ball still checks up on him. It's a helpless feeling sometimes. <laughs> He won his only career JBT title doing the three-step as well. That was up at Victor last year in a wild title match against Harley. But what we had hoped would be a sort of clash of the Titans here is not yet shaped up to be that. Oh man, I didn't know if he was going to make that. <laughs> See him stand up at the foul line. He didn't know if he was going to make that one either. He's a likable kid from Northern California, but uh, as most high level bowlers are, they're their own toughest critic, and he is not going to be happy with himself unless he can pull off a miracle here. The best he can do is 201. Salama at a 206 pace as it stands right now. Goes El Lofto. I think that's the, the right move and the only move. Better look through the pins. There's no right side. I don't think there's anything else you can do at this point, really. Even though it's a half 10, it's a better look than anything I saw before that. People, go, they see this on the US Open all the time, and some people, you know, on, on uh, message boards get all irritated at people up and say, why don't you just ball down and go right? Because it's not just about getting to the pocket, it's how the ball goes through the pins once it enters the pocket. The entry angle, the shape is the big buzzword right now, the, the, the shape of the ball. The shape isn't right to carry with plastic and it. When you have that much friction on the lane, a plastic ball would hook at his toes in the track. So it, it's not gonna get you where it needs to be. That's why the big players use that loft to get the ball to face up through the pins the right way. Solomon's got a little more oil left on his side and he's throwing plastic and he's so darn good at it. It's, it's basically his A game. So you're, Solomon gets his A game and Richard gets his uh, D minus game. And it's going to turn into a runaway. Sort of appropriate because it was a runaway through the first eight games. Solomon qualified first to plus 338. Richard was next at 180, so almost double Richard's score. A high game of 289 from Solomon. That was the high game of the tournament. No 300s today. Get in there. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> So a different case for Solomon. He's able to throw the plastic because he is getting the ball to save energy and get the right entry angle through the pins. 
Richard's gonna try it up the outside with something weak. Wow. We got it. A live camera. That was the only other thing besides lofting was to go up in the, like, I guess is the OB. Is that class you get I don't even know. I don't think it is. I think that's his IQ. It is IQ. Yeah. Kind of fluffing it right up the outside. Yeah. That's another thing about title matches. You can end up second guessing yourself too. We're talking about oh, lock being the right move. I still think it is. I think you got to be dead precise to try it playing outside there. Solomon and Harley uh, won two in all conference points. We'll see uh, how this win helps him out in a very long race. Oh! Creative way to make the 310, just like he drew it up. That's how he makes them all. I don't deserve it. Richard will tell you how he feels in his own Richard Paul way. Like Out of that target zone, not carry. Very, very Esperish. Talking about Jesper Svensson, who just kind of throws that same urethane a million miles up the left side and win, win, win at the pro level. Yeah, he's really hard to beat, too. He's <laughs> extremely hard to beat. To, to be comparing Solomon with Jesper is, uh, is not a reach at all, first of all. It's a compliment and a, appropriately so. And Solomon's got a victory lap. Back up. Always a nice luxury to have on the show to be uh, have it wrapped up by the eight. The flight's at eight. <laughs> oh, the backup target zone. Oh. It finally acted like a plastic ball. <laughs> Right. Right. <laughs> Great stuff here all weekend. Hopefully we'll get more good stuff for Texas. Hopefully we'll give out $5,000 one of these days. We're trying. A righty washout, shot lefty, no problem at all. Woo, look at this bag of ball. Crush! It's all the left side. <laughs> These guys are so talented, they just once they're relaxed, they can just work wonders on a bowling lane. Switch ball, whatever. What else, dude? 220 to 20. Uh oh. Richard is gonna get his camera camera time worth here. You guys it's not as funny as you guys said it was. Apparently not. Best look I've seen the whole game. Right. <laughs> 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 the boys and parents in the scratch division. Your runner up today, Richard Paul, the third. Holly, no, you're ready. Hobby. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> like, whoa, dude. Whoa. You don't gotta yell. Somebody is crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. You're crazy. Damn. Good heavens. Yeah, yeah. And your stretch division champion. It is his fifth career JBT title and a dominant one. The incredible Solomon Salama. Woo! Woo! There is a reason he is your two time defending national champ. He's the Solomon Staff Department and additional staff. Today. Thanks for sticking around and cheering on. Be sure to check out our website, YouTube, and Facebook. Travel safely wherever you're at. We'll see you in Las Vegas to do it all over again next weekend. Main event at the end of the year and back in California at Surf Bowl in Oceanside in January. We love you. We'll see you next time.